Three speedruns helped me develop the perfect Necromancer level build. And yes, it starts with summons, uses the golem to later transition them out because you're jumping world tiers too quick. With this build, I managed to go from level one to world tier three in around two hours. And there's two secrets that helped me do this. And they're not jumping in Domheim Tunnels 24 seven brain dead. I did this method on the eternal realm to have a baseline build and knowledge for you that will work all year long. Plus then the respective seasonal mechanics happening, which always will end in an updated video. The first big thing is we start in world tier two. Now that might come as a surprise because I tend to say world tier two is a noob trap. The 20% bonus XP is not worth it. The 20% more toughness of your opponents. But due to us using our minions together with blood surge and overpower early, we're kind of skipping the toughness because overpower damage scales in a very crazy way with your life and your fortify to kind of boost your damage continuously. What crit can't really do in the beginning. So with overpower, you can skip the bonus toughness easily and make maximum use of the 20% bonus XP. And yes, if you really want to, this would work in the Domheim tunnels, but I get something better for you. Let me explain the mythology first and then go down on the build and the skill the rotation you have to do and when to phase out the minions. Step one is from level one to 15. During this time, you're going to focus only on whispers. Yes, Tree of Whisper stuff, because Tree of Whisper stuff gives you double double, which means you have to kill minions to do things. You have to do the events. You have to go into dungeons and every monster you kill gives you 20% bonus XP. Plus, as you finish the Whisper, you get bonus bonus XP. Plus, then the Whisper as you actually get it done. And now with the help of your minions, of your summons that you're doing early and the overpower damage plus the corpse explosion, you're able to even do the plus five whisper dungeons. Usually they would feel a little bit slow and you're like, hmm, do you really want to fight a boss this early? But your minions are just beating the enemies to death. It is stupid. And especially around level eight, you're going to have three points already in your skeletal warriors, which makes them more sturdy and able to just simply not die anymore. Now, as you hit level 15, you're getting your skeletal mages and you continue doing whispers. And as soon as you're level 18, because on 18, your skeletal mages are also frost mages, you will actually go to the PvP area. In the PvP area, there's that boss, which gives you plus five whispers straight away. Huge amount of XP and killing him actually gives you the whisper XP on top. So he's so easy to kill with the help of your skeletons. The blood surge continues to resummoning, doing the corpse explosion because yes, he makes his own corpses. That's the thing about these Khazor abominations. They slam down, they make more corpses. You explode, you get them down really quick. That's so nice because you're essentially jumping from 18 to like 22, 23, just by doing the whisper quest in the two PVP area, which gives you two tree of whispers plus another seven points. So 17 in total. After that done, focus on the whispers on the map and do that until level 25. At level 25, we're getting the golem and we will actually use the golem. In this case, as his taunting form. Now you could say corpse tunnels or golem. Well, I'd rather have a golem running around because corpse tunnels require corpses and corpses are getting used up by skeletons and corpse explosion the whole time. Plus the golem can just rush in in the beginning. Very simple. It's just very good to keep him because he's a free meat shield. So you can actually keep blood surging very easy while your skeletal mages are filling up your essence the whole time, which allows you to do these whisper dungeons so damn nice without any hassle and then give you a very nice XP curve, especially with you not having to sit in Domheim tunnels. Now, this will continue until you're hitting level 33, 34. And 34 is the level where I went into the capstone dungeon. And let me tell you, you're going to throw the minions out. We're going to repurpose the skill points. I'll tell you more about the skill points and also the items and aspects you can pick up very early after this part. But with level 34 and the golem being your meat shield, you're able to just blast your way through the capstone dungeon, especially if you're then finally at the boss. You would say, hmm, golem, the taunt being useless and you having to fight melee against the boss. No, both things work very fine, especially the taunt of the golem can be used very nicely together with corpse tendrils to pull together all the minions he summons. Not only that, though, 
The golem itself, his taunt, makes so much staggered damage on the boss. Like, his bar gets almost one-third filled up one single taunt from him. Which then allows you to, in the right moment, if you time it correctly, skip a whole minion phase or skip a whole skeletal explosion phase. Because as he gets staggered, everything gets cancelled he was doing before. And that can be very helpful in certain scenarios. Now, you've beaten the capstone dungeon, you're level 35, but you don't know what to do in World Tier 3. That's very simple. Here, you're going to now do strongholds, six, and legion events. The legion event crops up, you go there. If there's someone else doing it with you, you're guaranteed to get two levels. Yep. Sometimes even three, if you have a potion and the bonus XP times 15 running from the fire. But you're also doing strongholds because strongholds are level gated. That means if I go with level 36 and World Tier 3 into a stronghold, that stronghold is also level 36, but it still gives the bonus XP of World Tier 3. The same goes, by the way, as you go into World Tier 4 with level 55, 57. You can do this now in World Tier 3, though, until you're level 42. Then you can start putting on your sacred gear and you're ready to just take on the overworld completely normal and return back to doing Three of Whisper stuff, which is so much more engaging and fun rather than doing the Domheim Tunnels 24-7. Before we get into what skill point at which level, let's look at the character first. Because we have a few key aspects you can get from the Codex of Powers. Yep, don't forget about the Codex of Powers. It's actually good. So, step one is Blood Surge Nova echoes again after a short delay dealing 40% less damage. That is simply huge free damage. And the best part is you get this from level 8 on, if you wish, from the Hoarfrost Demise. I would probably recommend doing this like as soon as you have your skeletal mages with level 18 after doing the PvP area. Then you could do the Horfrost Demise. And as you hit level 25 or unlock a different aspect, you can then go to the Enchanter to actually put it on your amulet because you keep the amulet the longest. The other aspect would be Disobedience for the bonus armor for yourself and for your golem. Since we're using Corpse Explosion as Shadow, we have continuously this tick happening that makes sure that the increased armor stays maxed out. Disobedience can be had by clearing Hall of the Damned in Kazakhstan and next to the Tars Tarsarek waypoint here. That's, you clear this and you also get Disobedience. And these two aspects are enough to clear the Capstone Dungeon. Now you can take everything with you that you picked up, but this is Bloodlands, this is Blood Wave, this is 30% bonus damage to fire, lightning, and physical. Physical does actually work. Or becoming injured while crowd control grounds you unstoppable. I mean, you notice, like, not, none of these is in any way useful. Also, if you do have sockets, you put in the maximum life gems that you're able to do the capstone dungeon easier. But these are really the two aspects you just want while leveling. You pick up everything else, sure. I mean, there's a link in the description below with the full aspectization with the end game aspects that you want but this is the only two things you need for leveling until your world tier four for the skills we're starting with 10 skill points as we have the renown done which brings us up to hemorrhage into initiates hemorrhage that is our fortify fortify plus life is damage so if your fortify is maxed out you do 100 more damage pretty much then you put the first five points straight away into Blood Surge with Enhanced Blood Surge and also Paranormal Blood Surge. This is how everything begins. Then subsequent points is into Corpse Explosion with Iron Maiden and Enhanced Iron Maiden. This in the very beginning gives you a free tool to do damage whenever there's a corpse. Plus with Iron Maiden, you now have the ability to get five essence per enemy cursed which then allows you to curse, blood surge, curse, blood surge, curse, blood surge. Your next points you want to put into skeletal mastery, as we want our skeletons to be as strong as possible, which then gets followed up by Grim Harvest into Fueled by Death. Because with Grim Harvest and Fueled by Death, straight up every skeleton summon or corpse explosion also gives you bonus damage, but also a little bit essence back. Now, as we're wanting to fight some of the bosses, you can also put the next three points into Hood Flash for these five Whisper Dungeons that we're never running out of corpses against the respective bosses. I would think the next three points in Corpse Tendrils will make perfect sense. Now, nope. we're going to be around there now that we get Skeletal Mages and we want our Skeletal Mages as strong as possible, which also brings us then down here to the ultimate skills. And after you've been healthy for at least two seconds, 
you and your minions gain attack speed, making you and your minions even more annoying. Which brings us then also to death defense to make them more tanky. This will stay now until level 35. We're also going to pick up the Golem, so that's another three points. Plus then Arathmus Vigor for the free overpower. With this setup, we have everyone super healthy. Now I have nine points left, as you see. So with nine points left, we would currently be level 25. That means 10 more levels. See, we're 25. We've gotten the Golem Mastery maxed out. We have all our minions tanky. Everything is good. Now we do nine more levels, 234, to be ready for the Capstone Dungeon. And these points optimally would make us stronger. So we're going here for Corpse Explosion and also Blighted Corpse Explosion. You can do this before you do the Golem Mastery or the Death Defense as well, because the Golem straight of the rip is quite tanky already. So if you want to have the Blighted Corpse Explosion beforehand, you can do this. But the normal Corpse Explosion also fulfills the job more than good. Now also putting two more points into Fueled by Death, since we're continuously interacting with the Corpse in the one or the other way will also give us the continuous 9% multiplicative damage. As we're then going to be heading into the Capstone Dungeon, we can also go for Corpse Tendrils, but I would make these points as we're doing the shift. First, you want damage reduction because we're going to be standing close to enemies and they're going to be close to us. So we want to take less damage against the high-level opponents from the Capstone Dungeon. Now, two points away from level 34, one into Gruesome Mending and one into Coil Assessed Blood. Now we're 34. We have arrived at the point where minions are getting trashed, so we're throwing out our skeletons. That means we can save these three points, we can save these three points, and we can also save Death Defense, to be honest. That is nine points that we're saving straight of the rib. You could also save the Inspiring Leader, if you want to. Now, first, the three points are landing in Tides of Blood. Because this is another 15% overpower damage multiplicative, and that's double while you're healthy. That's another 30% just flat damage on what you deal. That That's too good to ignore. And we're also going to be playing Corpse Tendrils. So one, two, three. Now, Corpse Tendrils do make things vulnerable and pull things together. We can also, now that we put the three points here, finally get them out of Inspiring Leader. The bonus attack speed is good, but is not that much needed in comparison to when we have all the skeletons happening. Now we put three more points on standalone for the huge damage reduction. It's 2% less effective because we have one golem, that's okay. And then also Memento Mori for the bonus sacrifice bonus. Since we can now throw out our skeletal warriors for resistance or bonus crit chance, the bonus shadow damage does work technically on the corpse explosion, but it's not that much worth it. The bonus resistance is quite nice against those stupid lightning dudes that you have to kill in the first part of the dungeon. And the mages, they get thrown out for overpower damage. And here already, where are we looking at? I have 280% overpower. And if we wouldn't be sacrificing the mages, you're only at 164%. So this bonus is almost doubling your overpower damage. Now, how would the remaining skill points look? First, flashing out Coolus's blood for more blood damage, and then one point in drain vitality for that tiny chance of a bit more fortifying. Also, our curse can now do even more damage. I mean, bringing that up to 12% is quite nice. And you want the unliving energy into, well, imperfectly balanced. That is a slight more essence cost, but the damage increase is humongous. Obviously, as we're then closing in for Elias, you also want to get Blood Mist. Yep. It's finally time to put a few points in there for the bonus corpses. That Blood Mist is going to replace our Golem. The Golem can finally go out. Now, you would say, ha, huh, Bone Storm could definitely replace that straight away. We don't want Bone Storm yet. Until we're World Tier 4, until we're Level 60, we're not even remotely looking at Bone Storm. We're going to actually be keeping up with the Iron Maiden because the Essence production just helps us to keep zooming. And no, we also do not want to crapify. Both of these are no options we're looking for. The Blood Mist is going to help tremendously against Elias to essentially give you these little bit of dodge ability to make some more corpses for the bonus stagger and everything. Technically, what you could do is you could put your corpse tendrils out to essentially replace the corpse tendrils still through the golem. I think that would be helpful for the Elias fine because the corpse tendrils are not doing that much for you where the golem is actually going to block quite some of his abilities of his stupid fire shebang shenanigans. 
therefore soaking up some of the damage that is supposed to hit you. One point in transfusion doesn't hurt to make random blood orbs. Random blood orbs heal you and your golem. And also two more points in Grim Harvest to really go up to this six essence. And the final two points left, you can put them in Inspiring Leader again for a little wee bit attack speed boost. Now we have the golem, we don't have the bone storm, but this will allow you to essentially get to level 60 easy. And after level 60, there's a video linked in the description below with a skill and paragon board for level 100. Now, how are you gonna continue the leveling? With level 55, 56, 57, you're gonna try to kill Elias and then go straight up to world tier four. Now, that's going to be a wee bit early, but again, there's strongholds, there's legion events until you're level 60, and then as you're putting on the ancestral gear, you can straight up do Nightmare Dungeons 21. Yes, you actually don't do any single Nightmare Dungeon beforehand. You're gonna straight up start with Nightmare Dungeon 21, more or less, in World Tier 4. Because before, it's just a gigantic time waste. And then in World Tier 4, as soon as you're 60 and have the Ancestral Gear, the world is an oyster. Helltides to get the Living Steel, Legion Events for the Blood, Tree of Whispers to get more Varshan materials, and also Legion Events for the Beast of Eyes. Congratulations, level 100 is just easily waiting for you. Now, one to see that Blood Surge build complete in action in Endgame. It's an absolute menace that can clear everything, even do well in AOZ.